Good evening. Welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight's stories include... I have always longed... ...two directions that cross-country skiing is a sport, and Virgil might take it. For the past three years, the Burgio Lions Club have had a committee in place to organize a snowmobile trip to raise money. The first two years, all of the money raised went to the Max Sims Camp for the Handicapped. However, last year, the money raised was divided amongst the Community Playground, the Stag Lake Youth Camp, and the Max Sims Camp for the Handicapped. I found out from the committee what they are planning for this year. Okay, the Lions are trying to get all of the skidoers into the community center now and get them registered and issued their colored ribbons before they line up the skidoos. And we get on our way to Grand Brit. There were 83 skidoers registered for the Grand Brit snowmobile trip. And we're not sure on the exact no amount of money raised, but it is believed to be in the vicinity of $5,000. a few minutes ago but uh, now we're all parking on the pond near the church in Grand Brit and when everyone gets there now we'll be going down to the school where we'll be uh, having our lunch. And he wonders what cards they might have dealt and they told those officials to go straight to hell. First, first, uh, won't call it casually, our first accident. Last year, approximately 85 snowmobilers took part in the trip to Grand Brit. This year, let's hope there's as many, if not more. Staying on the topic of winter activities, on Thursday of this past week, a meeting was held at the Parish Hall to try and organize a cross-country ski club for the general public. A ski club was organized at St. John Central High last year. However, this year, the organizers are trying to organize this club for everyone. in the high school, along with the high school, uh, we laid out a few goals at that time, uh, called a meeting on Valentine's Day last year, and elected uh, an executive uh, and established committee leaders and did a bit of work 
with some of the students in the high school uh, in cross-country skiing. Um, with us tonight, I think last, uh, we have last year's presidents, the president, Mr. Rick James. We also have uh, some of the members that worked on our various um, committees. Uh, see our uh, equipment manager, Quentin Oxford, is there. Our, um, trail guide, <laughs> our trail guide, Jason McDonald, is there. Um, our treasurer, uh, Vicky Clothier, is there. Uh, last year's treasurer, that was. Anybody else in the tell? There was a few people there. Anyway. But what I want to do now, man, I'm, uh, I'm going to run through with you tonight uh, what the broad goals of our club was last year in the high school. Then I want to just quickly uh, talk a little bit about, you know, some kind of evaluation, you know, from, from uh, what I see happen last year and some uh, new directions that we'd like to move in perhaps this year, okay? It's, and what we want to do this year is in a way, I guess, a continuation of the difference that we started last year in the book. Okay, so uh, do you have any nominations here for president? Let's open that up then. Do you have nominations? Anybody nominate anybody for president of the school club? Now, you can accept or you can decline, okay? I would like to nominate Greg James, who's our past president. Personally, I would nominate Greg. He was the first president, our past president. He is the person from the community right now. He's no longer in school. Uh, I nominate Greg for our president. <laughs> second there. Any other nominations for president? Any other nominations for president? Any other nominations for president? Club? by this accusation, uh, Big James, our president of the community of people. Okay, good James. I asked him before if he accepted, he told me he did. Okay, I'll do that. How about uh, vice president of the club? We need a vice president of the club right now. Any nominations for vice president? teams have been set up in five different minor hockey categories at the rink for any young individuals interested in the sport. A tradition for many on New Year's Eve is the shooting off of guns at midnight, but this can be a very dangerous tradition. Here's what can happen if you're not careful.
The company that was awarded the contract for the new health care facility for Burgio, Trans City Holdings Limited, has subtendered the landscaping portion of this contract. I called our member, the Honorable David Gilbert, to see who this subcontract was awarded to and when the work would begin. I was informed by Mr. Gilbert that the hospital subtender for the landscaping has been awarded to Parsons Construction and work should be starting this coming week. The two sheds are built on the site and The next topic is one that has changed after I reported it over the last two weeks. However, I can only report what I am told by officials involved with the Senior Center. I made some calls this past week to see if I could find out what is really going on. Due to all the controversy involved, several members of the Seniors Conflicts Committee have resigned. I received a copy of one of the letters of resignation. It reads as follows. I quote.
The floor is not yet done in the new senior center and the roof is not on. However, most of the siding is on and some of the windows are in. Not a whole lot has changed since our last visit to the senior site. So most of the siding is on the building as well as some of the windows are in place. But to date the floor hasn't been started, neither has the roof. As you can see, some supports have been put in place to hopefully protect us from eye winds. He also informed me that the committee has had more than 16 meetings, not two or three as stated in Mr. Ingham's letter. The first of our three new programs, Storytime, aired for the first time on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Here are a few highlights of what that show is about for anyone who missed it. But don't let the title of our show fool you. In addition to stories, we also have games and songs. be a weekly program to be aired every Saturday morning. Now over to Mayor McDonald with the budget for the Town Council. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. This evening I have prepared here a budget for 1992 from the Bridger Town Council. I also have a short Town Council report. So first of all we'll go with the Town Council report. The town manager was advised that work on site preparations for the new hospital will start tomorrow, Monday, January 20th. Senior Citizens Complex. Council was advised that work will start on the Seniors Complex also tomorrow, Monday, January 20th. Schedule Regulations. Council have received complaints concerning some schedule operators violating schedule regulations especially in the Muddy Hole and Tree Ponds area. Council would like to inform the general public that schedule regulations are still in effect and would like for schedulers to cooperate and obey the regulations. All regulations, municipal and provincial schedule regulations will be enforced by the RCMP. The present Virgil Hospital. Virgil Town Council was advised by Mr. Doug Cannell, our board representative on the Western Memorial Hospital Board. The board is presently waiting a response from Minister of Health concerning the Virgil Hospital. Town permits. The cost of all permits issued by the Virgil Town Council have increased by $5. Building applications. There were no building applications dealt with at the Wednesday night's council meeting, but will be dealt with at the next regular council meeting. A request from A.J. Matthews Elementary School for a scholarship donation was received. Councils decided to pay the elementary school scholarship $50 and also the Virgil High School scholarship 
Also, council would continue to pay $500 scholarship for the caller scholarship. Correspondence was received from Mr. Gordon Ingham, chairman of the museum committee. This correspondence was read and placed on file. Contractors claim number seven for Small Southern Bridge was approved by council for payment in the amount of $101,000. $443.73. Engineering claim number 10 for Small Southern Bridge was approved by council for payment in the amount of $18,308.24. A letter regarding the Hospitality Newfoundland Commission was read. It was generally the consensus of council that no one would attend this convention at this time. That's a short council report. Now we have budget 92. Council adopted this 1992 budget at a regular meeting of council well on January the 15th, 1992. Council had a very difficult time trying to balance this budget. This was largely, largely due to the cutbacks by the provincial government. And I just want to elaborate on that a little. Uh, the town of Virgil this year has been cut and his revenue grants from the provincial government uh, the amount of $42,000. So we have a shortfall of $42,000. Now this shortfall puts us back to 1987. That's basically what we received in 1987 is the amount we're going to receive now. I guess if there's a positive side to this budget, it is the residents of Berger will not face a tax increase this year. And I like to repeat that, will not face a tax increase this year. Considering the state of the economy and the difficult times people were faced with, and after lengthy deliberation, it was decided the council would have to absorb the loss in revenue by some other means. This brings up the negative side of the budget. In order to balance the budget, council had to cut on operational and maintenance costs. Capital works for this year is practically nil. Council of Oswald imposed the one-year wage freeze for all employees. This includes the town manager, town clerk, and all unionized employees. Council's overall budget shows a revenue and expenditure of $618,660. The revenue was made up of local taxes in the amount of $406,835. The government grants the subsidies in the amount of $204,000. $805, and also rental in the amount of $7,020. Now, on the expenditure side of the budget, the largest amount is long-term debt charges in the amount of $210,231. This represents $117,030 council has to pay every year on the original water system. $8,242 represents the amount per, council, per year council will have to pay for the next 10 years on phase one of the incinerator project. And $37,030 represents loans at the Bank of Nova Scotia to be paid off for the next two to five years for equipment purchases such as new fire truck, new loader, and repairs to old fire truck. $20,000 is allocated to fire protection. 29,500 allocated to street lighting. 28,000 allocated to garbage collection. Payroll and wages, 135,000. Snow clearing, 30,000. Operation and maintenance of the water system, 45,400. Dog control, 7,000. Equipment and general maintenance, 18,000. Insurance, Audit fee and assessment fees, 18000 And maintenance of roads and bridges, an additional 10000 In capital expenditure, there are only three projects going ahead this year. Number one, extension to water line on Smalls Island. Number two, road in Mr. Clayton Ayers. Uh, area. Now this road is cost shared by the town of Virgil and the residents in that area on a 50-50 basis. And number three, an extension to the sewer system at the trailer park 
And those items, those three items will cost the town a total of $24,000. There are a number of other projects we, which we hope will be going ahead this year, and I repeat, hope will be going ahead this year. This is the government-funded chemical works cost shared between the government and the town of Virgil. And those projects will be shared at a 60-40 cost. Those projects can only go ahead if government funding is approved. One project we know that will be going ahead in is phase two of the incinerator. Government have approved funding for this in the amount of $140,000. This project will be going ahead in the spring. And we're expecting tenders to be called on that over the next couple of days. Another project dependent on government approval is the water line for Mr. Zid in the amount of $46,400. Now this project will go ahead if we get funding from the provincial government. Council is also hopeful in getting government approval for the upgrading and repaving of the local town roads in the amount of $1,262,200. An upgrading of the chlorine plant and water reservoir, $131,000. So those projects, providing government funding is approved, will go ahead next year. If those projects are approved and government funding is obtained, council will need an additional revenue of $114,714 for 1993, and each year thereafter for the next 10 years, to meet its share of the payment on those projects. Council is confident, however, that those projects will become a reality without too much burden placed on the taxpayers of Virgil. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have your 1992 budget. And I believe with the state of the economy, the cutbacks the town has received, and uh, I guess the employment in the area, that we're certainly pleased to be able to present to you this evening this budget without any tax increase. Good night, and may God bless. That's it for tonight's program. We hope you enjoyed it. On behalf of BBS and the BBS volunteers, I'm Dave Cooper. Have a great week. Good night.